it's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for coming back on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, as always. We love having you on US 99.5. And March is Women's History Month, so you are the perfect guest to talk about some women's issues. Everybody knows uh, you've been on the show before, Dr. Tracy Weiland. You've got 11 books out. The latest book is Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends. And you're currently on a corporate speaking tour. People can learn more at TracyWeiland.com. Now, as I mentioned, March is Women's History Month. So you're saying, let's not man up, let's woman up. And I love the sound of that, Tracy. I really do. Yes, you know, Laura, I'm very up on women in 2015. And a lot of it started when we talked in 2014. There was so much momentum. And I'm just seeing it continue into 2015. So I says, yes, I'm up on women and let's women up. Yes, I love the sound of that. So first of all, let's talk about women in the workplace. That's, I think, you know, one of the things we talk about most frequently. People can move up in their job via a promotion, maybe a salary increase. What are the trends that you're noticing most prominently this year for women to keep an eye on? Well, I think what I've seen that actually started in 2014 is all of a sudden women are in the spotlight. Diversity is a hot topic. Companies are rallying around it. And I would trigger it back to Google Publishing. And Google, you got to remember, is a Silicon Valley firm. They were publishing their data. They said, I have to be transparent on the discrepancy in our workforce. And it, what it showed is that it's pretty much all white men. It was not very diverse, gender, color. And they came clean. And then nine other companies published their data, all Silicon Valley firms, to show that, you know what, we do have a problem. And so the, now it was, okay, now what are we all going to do about it? But that momentum just kept on going because we had executives signing up dollars saying, okay, let's invest now in diversity programs. Let's make sure that we make commitments to having more women on the boards, more women executives. So to me, when you have a lot of focus and a lot of optimism and a lot of dialogue, that's the time when women say, oh, the trend is changing and I need to get on board with this. Right. That really opens up a lot of opportunities for women who are looking to move up in their current position. Let's talk to those women who maybe don't want to stay in their current firm. What advice can you give to those women who are looking to kind of up and out of the firm where they currently work? Absolutely. And I think a lot of people feel that the firm is a family. And I say the firm isn't your family. It's your friend. And it's a two-way transaction. You know, you're productive. You're, you're lending your expertise. You're developing your experience. In exchange, you're getting compensated for that with salary and hopefully benefits. But if you're not being heard and you have proof points, right, that it is time for you to get the next opportunity, I wouldn't limit yourself to just within the firm. I think it is a good time to look outside the firm. And the reason is, is that the jobs reports have been very positive. Companies are very optimistic. Many are reporting that they're not only in the past where they're just filling, hiring to fill openings, now they're actually hiring for the future. This all symbolizes to me or signals to me that there are opportunities. And in past research, we found that you could get a salary increase somewhere between 20 to 23 percent when you left a firm for a similar job or better job at another firm. So sometimes it actually makes more financial sense to leave the firm because you may be stuck in those grade bands or just in whatever salary ranges they have for the firm. We're talking with Dr. Tracy Weiland today on US 99.5. We were just talking about kind of going through a job change. This can be a pretty scary thing. And I think a lot of people if they want a job change, sometimes they just take matters into their own hands. They start their own business. Are there more women out there who are taking on an entrepreneurship type of role? Yes. Yeah, so some of the trends that I'm seeing is that, you know, women are minding their own business. Women-owned firms are growing at one and a half times the national average. Women actually, you wouldn't imagine it, but they actually own over 25% of the franchises out there. We used to just think about uh, real estate. And our women under 30 are developing startups. So I clearly see a trend where we women are moving into wanting to own their own businesses and that the corporate path is not the only option. And what kinds of franchises are you noticing that women tend to own? Women have very interesting franchises. We used to think about them as real estate and actually the average age of a franchise owner is somewhere between 45 and 54. So I'm sort of giving a big nod to Generation X and boomers for moving into these kinds of businesses. And women open up interesting things that are interesting to them, whether it's salons, spas, clothing, fitness, 
this. I mean, you may have read about an entrepreneur magazine, the School of Rock, Great Clips, which is a hair, and Huntington Learning Centers. What I like about franchising is you can get in at different price points. So depending on what you're looking for, an entrepreneur magazine is a great place to look for franchises. It, it could be an opportunity for more women to do. Now let's talk about politics a little bit. More and more women are getting involved in politics. Obviously, everybody knows who Hillary Clinton is. But talk to me about some of the trends here that women are getting more upbeat about politics this year. Well, here's what I noticed is that the conversation in this year in 2015, and our election is in 2016, the conversation is all about women, whether it's Hillary Clinton and who's running against her, which is pretty much what I'm hearing, just who's against her, or names like Elizabeth Warren or Carly Fiorina. It's top of tongue for everyone in Europe, Angela Merkel, I mean, Janet Yellen with the Fed. So women have become part of the conversation now in politics, and it isn't just left to talking about male candidates anymore. And we're at our highest rates in the Congress and the House, and I think that will continue to increase. So I think this year you're going to hear a lot of conversation about women in politics, and then next year will be the big election. It's US 99.5. We're talking about ways that you can woman up, because March is Women's History Month, because we don't want a man up, we want a woman up. So we're talking with Dr. Tracy Weiland. We've talked about careers, we've talked about politics a little bit. Let's talk about travel. It looks like the travel numbers are up specifically for boomer women, right? That's right. You know, the point is here is that every generation of women brings something to the table and is very innovative. And our boomer women over 55, AARP, did some research to see what are they up to. Well, they found out they are traveling. They've taken four to five trips a year, mostly in the U.S., but a lot of them are going abroad. And they're doing it for bucket lists. You know, after work, what do I want to do? I have a bucket list. I want to see my family. And I'm traveling with friends and having a good summer vacation that I couldn't have when I was working. So I think they're really setting a trend that women like to travel and will continue to do that well into their retirement. I wish I could just travel all the time, Tracy. (laughs) I got to start saving up. (laughs) And now another trend that you're noticing specifically with the boomer women, you know, women over the age of 50 or so, more and more of them are now moving in together, which I'd imagine helps them save a ton of money. Yes. And I say that our boomer women are starting to shack up. And I'm sure you remember the TV show Golden Girls. I love it. Oh, yes. And and it was about four seasoned women who were either widowed or divorced who shared a house in Florida. And actually, you could see the benefits of having roommates again well into your retirement because who wants to be alone, you know, or who wants to live with your kids after you're retired? (laughs) You want to be with your best buddies and have roommates and you can share the chores, you can share the finances, and you can do a lot of social activities together. So this is another trend that AARP mentioned is that instead of going it solo or back to home, women are, are shacking up with each other and having a lot of fun. Well, I like the trends that you've pointed out today. There's more and more women that are heading up words in their jobs and uh, we just mentioned traveling more shacking up together saves them a lot of dough and it's more fun and obviously the political scheme is going to be shifting I think pretty dramatically in the next year or two we've been chatting with Dr. Tracy Weiland the website is tracyweiland.com she's got 11 books out the latest is employed for life 21st century career trends where can our listeners go to learn more Tracy sure my website is tracyweiland.com which is t-r-a-c-e-y-w-i-l-e-n.com I'm on Twitter at Tracy Weiland, Facebook, Dr. Tracy Weiland, and I'm on LinkedIn. All right. Thanks so much for coming back on the show. We appreciate it.